again for the opportunity. Now, I have this one, Lee. I'm not presenting anything on slides. Do you know why? <laughs> <laughs> because when I was growing up, my grandmother told me that um, when you go to church, you carry your pen, you carry a book, and you take notes of what is being preached. So if I show you the slides, you people will not open your Bibles, and you people will not read the Bible as well. Are we in agreement? Yes. Yes, Yes, we are. Sawa too. I thought you just came by. Yes, you are. Okay, as um, before we begin, I have something. I have a question for one is for Ruth. Another one is for Berlin. Question number one. Oh, sorry, I am asking the wrong people. Okay, one is for parents. Another one is for Berlin. Yes. One is for parents, preferably those parents with teenagers. And another one should go to Berlin. Berlin, your question is this. Mm, why do you think we celebrate birthdays? That is my question. Why do we celebrate birthdays? Keep, keep thinking about it. And a uh, question for parents. I don't know if I have a parent with teenagers. I don't know. Someone please help me. Do you have a parent who has teenagers? Hello. Yes. Thank you very much, Dad. Okay, the question comes like this. Uh, we have always made this mistake as parents, me being one of them, though my kids have not yet reached that age of uh, teenagehood. But I, I am also a parent, so my question is this. There is this trend, this trend of parents promising our kids. Oh, baby, please work hard. If you pass this exam this time wrong, if you get 400 marks and above, or if you perform very well, I'll buy you this gift. So the child works under the influence of a uh, reward, yeah? And there is also another side of it whereby we say, mm, uh, if you do this, I will punish you. So there's that thing that a child does not do A because the kid knows if I do A, I will be punished. We have that disease in us as parents. Now, we have been doing it. Has it helped our, par our children or it has terribly messed them? That is another question for dad. Dad, you said you, you, you can answer that one. So keep pondering about the question, the questions that is Berlin and dad, and anyone else can also contribute as that time comes. So we are going to look at uh, the nature of sin. That is our theme today. And uh, it is, a, it is a, a deep, a deep message. It is a long message, but we will, we will see how the spirit will lead us and to understanding that which he has for us today. So before we begin, I want us to talk to God. Let us pray. Mighty Father, please speak to our hearts. We surrender unto thee. Fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit, that you only may be seen and not us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our key verse is uh, Isaiah chapter 59. And verse 1 and 2, I am not a preacher, I am a teacher. And remember, a teacher shares responsibilities. He delegates duties to learners. So I will delegate some duties to you people. And uh, 
We are going to look at Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2. It's a very common verse that almost all of us know. And uh, I'll request Jacob to read. Jacob, please read for us. I charge Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2. Thank you. Okay, let's read that. Uh, reading from New King James Version. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy it cannot hear. Too. But his iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Thank you very much, Brother Jaika. Something has separated us from God, and that something is definitely sin. I really thank God because this sin problem has been dealt with even by the lesson itself while we were talking about the story of uh, David. And um, we've seen what sin can really do. Now, Isaiah tells us that it is not God who is going away from us. God has not left us. It is by our own choice, by our own decision that we have allowed. We have created some, uh, can I call it, something that are separated, something that separated, separates two things. For example, a wall. The wall that has been created between God and us, humans, is the wall of sin. So sin is simply telling God, God, please leave us. Depart from us. Leave us alone. We do not need you again. No. We want to be left alone. That is what sin has done. And uh, as we look at the nature of sin, we are looking at uh, how sin came into being, how Satan has been blinding our eyes, blocking our minds from realizing, from understanding the character of God. And it's such a beautiful uh, message, a beautiful message to understand the true character of God. Understanding the character of God will take away, will, will like sweep away the way we understand sin. So if we can be able to understand the true character of God, which is the best news in the universe, we can be able to do away with the lies, the falsehoods that the devil has created through sin. Remember, the author of sin is the devil. And the devil is really making sure that he makes us look at, at God as the cause, the problem of all that we are going through. And I really pray that God may lead us so that we can be able to understand indeed what the nature of sin exactly is as we try to understand the character of God. Um, another verse I really wish us to look at is the book of Job. Job. Ruth, Job chapter 22. Yes, yes madam. Job chapter 22, verses 15, all the way to 15. Okay, Job chapter 22, verses 15 to 22, KJV reads, Has thou marked the old way which wicked men have trodden, which were cut down out of time, whose foundation was overflown with a flood, which said unto God, Depart from us, and what can the Almighty do for them? <coughs> Yet he filled their houses with good things, but the counsel of the wicked is far from me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I want to look at verse 17. Which said unto God, depart from us. And what can the Almighty do for them? It starts by this question. 
Has thou marked the old way which wicked men trodden? Wicked men, wicked men. What 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 qualifies men to be wicked? It's simply sin. Yeah, it is sin. Has thou marked the old way which wicked men have trodden? Which were cut down out of time, whose foundation was overflown with a flood, which said unto God, depart from us. So what makes, what qualifies men to be wicked is sin. So simply sin is bringing that idea of, hey God, please leave me alone. I can do this alone. It is such a painful condition, but we really pray that God may help us. Now, let us look at another point about this nature of sin. Sin separates the creator from the creature and later ultimately produces death. Sin separates the creator from the creature and produces death death wow too bad too bad let us look at james chapter 1 verse 13 to 15 james chapter 1 verse 13 to 15 so that we can be able to see how sin separates the creed the creator from the creature. Balin, please read for us that verse. Thank you. Okay, James chapter 1, verse 15 to... Chapter 1, verse 15, 13 to 15. Okay, I'll read the uh, NIV version. It says, when tempted, no one should say... God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one of but each one is tempted when, by his own evil desires, he is dragged away and enticed. 15. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Those people who are my age <laughs> can remember this song. Lakini kila moja hujaribiwa na tama yake mwenyewe na kudanganywa. Tama ikichukua mimba huzama uti. No. Tama iki chuku amimba huza dambi. Dambi na yo iki shaku koma huza mauti. Those wordings are exactly what Sister Berlin has read. Everyone is tempted by our own what? By our own desire. Eh? Tama. Kila mtu hujaribiwa na tamaa by our own, by our own, what? Tempted when he's drawn away from his own lust, by our own desire. And then when the lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is finished, brings forth death wow. so it completely separates us from god and leaves us alone and when god gives up and lets you be and then now death strikes long time ago when i was uh i don't know it's not a long time ago when i was in high school i remember Mm. I remember my mom telling me that, uh, you know, if you entertain somebody, like she was warning me <laughs> about men, 
She was telling me, if you entertain a man, yeah, you might not be interested. If you entertain a man, for example, a man stops you on the way, and then you're like, you stop. That is the first act, stopping and giving the man ear. And then the next thing, they will talk to you. You know, when you stop, and they'll say, yeah, this one, I can proceed to the next stage. The next stage is a talk, a cool one. Hi, hi. My name is this. Oh, my name is this. Lately, nowadays, it is hi, hi. My name is this. Please give me your number. The moment you give out your number, that man sees, ah, there is an opportunity here. So even if you say no at the beginning, that person knows if I take some time, I'll win over this guy. So simply what they do, they will, uh, they will see an opportunity to win you over. So if you entertain them, you keep responding to their questions. You keep entertaining them. That thing depends. And then, you know, the devil is very cunning. That is not when he comes in, just like the case of David. David is supposed to be in the war, but he decides to stay at home. And when he stays at home, he goes to the balcony. Amen. This is my kingdom. Keeps admiring it. Hey, I've really won. I've won battles. Hey, it's time to rest. And when now the devil brings the temptation, yeah, that thing is inside. And when it grows, gives birth to another thing. And then when that thing grows again, finally what comes is death. My mother told me, when the devil has seen that you be, he has won you over, he will not give you a chance to repent, to go back and repent. Because he knows he will lose you. So the moment you struggle and try to go back to repent, he'll either kill you if you're not that strong, uh, stronger in your faith, as in if you're not that persistent in prayer, if you're just, yeah, I, I, I will, I will. That act of you trying to go back will make the devil even furious and he'll make sure that you die in that sin and as you die in the sin you are lost forever that is how sin completely separates us from the creator by bringing death to bad god is the fountain of life the source of life separating ourselves from life it produces death that is very clear for example for example, like uh, from this, from this end, you will get life. So you decide not to go to that end, you go to the other side. What do you think you will get? The opposite of life is simply death. The giver of life is God. When we separate ourselves from the giver of life, it simply brings death. As recorded in Psalms chapter 36 verse 9. Psalms 36 verse 9. I'll read that one. It says... Where was that verse? Mm hmm. Get it. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Let me get the verse. Let me get it from my Bible. Psalms chapter 36, verse 9. Anyone who has gotten it? Yeah, Psalms 30, chapter 36, verse 9, it says, mm -hmm. For with thee is the fountain of life, in thy light shall we see light. Amen, amen, amen. In God is the fountain of life in God. But if we choose the other one, definitely we are done. And Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13. Jeremiah 2 13. Okay. Jeremiah 2 13. Mm -hmm. It says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Thank you very much, Sister Ruth. We have forsaken God, and we have tried to dug our own cisterns. And from our own cisterns, we will get nothing. Our own cisterns 
cannot give us life. The only system that can give us life is God's. Now, there is that part of the lesson of this week that was giving us this story of, uh, I don't know, someone was doing suckers. Yeah, someone was doing suckers and uh, he was warning guys, hey, you guys, please go for a checkup. You know, cancer is bad. Go and test yourself. If you find that you have it, you will be cured early. But with him, he was very busy doing his circus thing and uh, professionalizing his profession. And he forgot about what he himself was warning people about. And when his cancer was noted, it was too late, he could not be assisted. And he lost his life. How many of us have been out there preaching the gospel to, to people about sin problem and our own self? We are in that deep sin that by the time we, it will be noticed or it will be noted, it will be too late and we would have been separated from the source of life. Sin is a malignant tumor. Sin is a malignant tumor. Remember, malignant tumor is one that cannot be cured. Like a cancer. It produces destruction and death because it separates every detail of the structure and function of the affected part of creation from God's righteousness. Such a pain. Sin. You know, like cancer, the little knowledge about I have about cancer, when cancer affects an individual, it starts with, I don't know, few cells. And it goes eating every cell if it is not treated early. If it is noticed, if it's not noticed early and treated, it will definitely kill one. It will eat every cell in the body and mess a human being and finally take life so that is exactly what sin does if it is noted early and dealt with death will not result but if it's left it will eat every faculty the every detail of the structure and function of the affected part of creation and it will make sure it separates you from the righteousness of god and the knowledge of god the Holy Spirit must apply God's wisdom and righteousness in Christ to every detail of the structure and function of creation in order for created beings to be maintained in perfect structural and functional integrity. So what is needed? The Holy Spirit must apply God's wisdom and righteousness in Christ to every part that sin has affected. And which part has sin affected? That is another question. Now, uh, we, we look at how sin originated. That is the only way we can understand what structure, what function of a human being that sin has affected, that the Holy Spirit needs to work on. First, all of us, I think all of us in this platform, those who are present right now, we understand how sin originated very well. Sin originated in heaven. It originated in heaven in the mind of the most righteous creature that God created. How it started, no one can be able to tell. It is usually called the mystery of and righteousness. Oh, the ministry, the mystery of, uh, the mystery of, and righteousness, or of sin, or the mystery of ungodliness, or something. You can, you can, you can use your own words to explain it. But it is a mystery. No one can be able to understand. It originated in the mind of Lucifer. Lucifer was a holy creature. He was an angel. All of us know. He opposed the law and the government of God. He started by opposing everything that God had created. 
his government, his laws, is everything. And he said that his way now, his way was better than God's way. Now there was warfare. It began in heaven. And as it began in heaven, as it started in him, you can be able to read it from Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 11 to 19, how Lucifer is being described. Because of your beauty, thine heart was lifted up. You corrupted your wisdom by reason of your brightness. Now, that is where we come to what we call self. That word, self. It's me, I can sing the seven sweet voices. It is me, the covering cherub. It is me, made of every precious stone, which covers me, sadis, sadias, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, emerald, carbuncle, gold. Yeah, all those, it is me, self. That is how it started. And then it grew from there. And now he started now opposing the government of God in order to make his lies to look very true. Mm -hmm. He had to, 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 to give false stories about God, fake stories about God and his government. Oh, God is a tyrant. Oh, God is, you know, God wants us to worship him. Now, he managed to deceive a third of the angels. And he, he did that by telling lies about God's character, his government, and the law of God. That is how he could only achieve his plan. And for his government to stand, he had to even paint God even darker and darker and darker. Now, when we understand the origin of sin, which is now a mystery, but it started from the mind, which gave birth to self. Now, that same author of evil or sin or, yeah, the, all the falsehood that we are looking at that gave birth to this sin, now, that is what has brought the problem. That is the malignant tumor. And it is in every human being. We will find a solution, though, to it. Now, read John chapter 8, verse 44, please. Someone, now I'm not picking anyone. <laughs> Any first reader. John chapter 8, verse 44. Okay, I'm there. John 8, 44. Mm -hmm. It says, You are of your father, the devil, and the last of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it all. Mm-hmm. Ye are of your father. Ye who speak lies. Because he is the author, the genesis, the beginner of all lies. He is the one who suggested that the, the, the law of God was burdensome. He is the one who was trying to convince the heavenly host that the law of God was grievous and that it ought not to be obeyed. That is what he was saying about his creator. That his law is grievous, burdensome, and it ought not to be obeyed. He started this whole lie. But God told us that his commandments are not grievous, as it is recorded in 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, which says, For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. 
our God, a father, has declared that his commandments, his laws are not grievous, they are not burdensome. It's just a law of love because he's a God of love. But now the devil is bringing in, he sneaked in sin and he wants to paint God the source of every pain that humanity is going through. Now, <laughs> there is this verse that I was reading. It really confused me, but I hope the Spirit will lead us to understand it. That verse of Matthew chapter 25, verse 24 and 25, which talks about the talent, talks about the talent. Then he which has received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strode. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. I think we are using this verse to understand the lies of the devil. Like, we can use that verse to see how the devil has created a lot of confusion to humanity. That you, God, you are a hard man. You want to harvest where you did not sow. And you want to gather where you did not strew. And so I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the earth. So now, God, take your talent. You see, the devil is painting God as a very bad person. Oh, I don't know. Sorry for using person. That God is really bad. God is not to be trusted. God is not to be obeyed. Remember, all this we are talking about is sin and its nature. It is all painting God bad. And Satan has judged God as a tyrant, a hard God. He is selfish, arbitrarily, severe, and that he seeks his own aggrandizement while oppressing his creatures. That is exactly what Satan was preaching in heaven. This man is just oppressing us. Oh, sorry, man, okay. This, whatever, he's oppressing us. I'll give you a government of freedom. I'll give you a government which does not, yeah, it does not need you to strain so much. It's just an easy way, easy way, easy way, easy way. I'll give you a wider road. This, this road is too narrow. You know, you'll be squeezing yourself. You'll be hurting yourself. This guy is oppressing you. You want to, yeah. He's just having fun oppressing us. That is the gospel. The devil was preaching in heaven. Now, I will support that statement from the book of Genesis. Genesis, everyone understands what the devil really did to Adam and Eve. He preached falsehood. He preached lie. Remember God had told Adam and Eve, Thou shalt not eat from the tree in the midst of the garden. If thou wilt eat it, thou wilt surely die. Now listen to the devil. Uh, you guys will read the verse by yourself. Eh? It is Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. Remember, what when, when God told them not to eat, it is Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. Now, the devil is coming with this very smart lie. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yeah. Has God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the tree of, of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. 
I remember the woman, the woman added some words that God did not use. There is that word, that statement of nor touch it. But let us go to that Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. Let us confirm so that we cannot be telling stories that we do not, we are not sure of. 17. Chapter 2 verse, let us begin from 16. It says, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in that day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And in chapter 3 where the woman is responding, <laughs> human beings, we have a problem. Three, because that is the same, same problem that we have. That is the same problem we have. Eh? That self, that one. Three, the woman responded to the serpent saying, saying like this. But of the fruit of the tree, which is, that is chapter three, verse three. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat it. Neither. Let me let me underline this part here. Yeah. See, we are even adding words. We are even adding statements to our God. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. A very big one. A big lie here. Did God say that they shall not touch it? Ruth. Hello? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Did God say that they should not even touch it? No, that was a lie. It looked like a God did not say that you shall not eat it, neither touch it. He said very clearly here in verse 17, Thou shall not eat of it. So Eve is even is even is even entertaining the devil even much. Just like I said before. You know, when we keep entertaining the devil, he finds an opportunity to come closer, even closer to us. And then boom, there you have it. We are in sin. And by the time we come to realize that, oh, oh, okay, all right. It is done. So Eve added some statements there. Satan has deceived the whole world into believing that on wayness. Remember, he lied to Eve and Adam. He told them, if you do this, if you eat the fruit, you will know of good and evil. You will blah, blah, blah. You will blah, 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 all that. He gave them false promises, just like right now. He is deceiving the old world into believing that on wayness, which is sin, does not produce death. That is what the devil is doing. The deception is ongoing. Hey, Lilian, ah, that one is easy. You know, ah, this one you can play it like this. And then at the end of the day, when you're like, you are not even, uh, you, you are not even, uh, when you're coming back to your senses, you're like, oh. Just like Adam and Eve, like, oh, we were told not to eat the, of the fruit. Now we have eaten. One thing is for sure. The glory of God left them. Number two, which was really very clear. Proving the devil as a very good liar. One, the glory of the Lord left them. Two, they had to run away from God. That is a very clear indication to tell us that the nature of sin, rule number one, is separates us from the creator, from God. They used to commune together freely with God. But now they are running away. You remember, now sin is causing you now to run away from the creator. It is not even God running away. It is God coming to look for them. Hey, you guys, where are you? We are hiding. Why? Did you do what I told you not to do? Now, who is, uh, who is it, it has been proven here. Now it is clear. It is written in black and white. Who was telling lies? Is it God or Lucifer? 
very clearly it was lucifer so he has made us the whole world to believe that our own wayness which is sin does not produce death as a result people blame everything else except sin so painful god why it not that you gave me this woman god please i don't think i could have sinned oh god no not me why it not that you created this serpent i couldn't have sinned so everything else is being blamed but not sin later on when they tested the painful feeling of death is when they realized oh indeed god said if we do this we will surely die but it was too late they blame we human beings we blame god the majority of people even religious people believe that the only problem with sin is that it makes god angry and causes him to kill Sin makes God angry. Sin causes God to kill. But we are not blaming sin. And many more believe that sin believe that sinners will not die at all, but will live forever in hellfire. It is a dangerous lie. Uh lot sometimes back. <laughs> I, I'm used to saying long time ago. Sometimes back I used to watch movies actually horror movies yeah action movies and uh, there is that part there is that deception of uh, spiritism is it spirit spiritualism and there is that part of uh, when you die you don't die you like you are you put somewhere a special place yeah and there is even that belief in uh, some churches that if i seen right now and i die i don't go to i don't die i'm taken to some place called purgatory and then i'll be tortured and tortured and cleansed and cleansed then i'll be holy again so there is that lie we can use very many words to explain that lie that lie that there is no dying forever and uh, and when i was in primary i remember we were told that uh, when you you when christ will come again for his second advent the sinners will not be destroyed there'll be that bit by bit torment that you will be burned one finger for a thousand years another finger for a thousand so there'll be no death there is no death at all so that is a lie that has been that has been put in uh, in especially the this generation people believe that there is no death that is another lie from the devil sin has been a very big problem for satan to establish his government of sin satan has promulgated lies about god's character and he has blackened god's reputation and that is why christ had to come to give us a revelation of god as loving as he is to give us the clear picture of god so that we can be drawn away from these lies that were planted in us and which has taken over the whole world and even the christian family that is why christ had to come as it is in john first john chapter 1 verse 5 which says this then is the message which we heard have heard of him and declare unto you that god is light and in him is no darkness at all because through one man sin came and through christ coming to reveal god life came so if we believe by faith in what christ did in the message that christ preached about the father those who have seen okay as, as as philip was being was asking but we have not seen god if you have seen christ you have seen god if you've listened to christ you have listened to god if you've believed the message that christ brought about god you've already heard 
the message of the Father because they work in one. So as we receive the knowledge of Christ, the knowledge of God, we learn that God is light and not in him will you find darkness at all. So this deception of the devil, making God look like a, a very, I don't know, it is only dealt with or it was only dealt with by Christ. And it will only be dealt with when we understand that our God is love and God is light. And in him, there is no darkness at all. So God can never be the source of sin, the source of evil, the source of death. He is instead the fountain of life. It is sin which causes separation from God and therefore produces all evil and ultimately produces death. So brothers and sisters, God claims that no other way but his own way can work this sin problem. He has warned that sin is the root cause of all the problems, all the evil, all the death in our world. And he has declared that only his way of... Wow, love this. I love this. Satan planted self. Now God is planting selfless love. The devil planted self. God is planting selfless love through Christ Jesus. That his only way of selfless love, truth, wisdom, and righteousness can conquer sin and produce eternal peace. Isn't our God loving? Isn't our God a very good father of us? Isn't our God the sweetest that we all need? Isn't the love of God the best remedy, the best medicine that we need for sin problem? Brethren, in our helpless state, in our desire to have the eternal peace that only comes from God. It is my prayer this morning that we may embrace the knowledge that only comes from God. Understanding the character of God, the sweetest, the best, message or news that the universe needs right now. The only way we can deal with our problem, we can deal with our sin problem, is by having and understanding the knowledge of God's character. That our God is not the source, the author of sin, of evil or death. May our good Lord help us that we may be able to comprehend his character as revealed by his son, Jesus Christ. And by the knowledge of Christ, of, 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 uh, of, of this character of God, we can be able to find the remedy of the sin problem. And as we find the remedy, there'll be eternal peace. There'll be no more fights. Like who is doing, like which church is good, like who who dresses how, like who eats what, who is, I don't know, reformation, I don't know, in this, in dress, in, in food, in everything. But that love of Christ in you will constrain you to live a life free from sin. A life 
of righteousness. Because in and by ourselves, all that comes out is sin. Because that is what, what is planted in our hearts, in our minds. Unless we receive that new heart. Remember the prayer of David? Was it the prayer of David? Uh, was it? Yes, yes. Please give me that verse. That verse which says, uh, create in me a new heart. Which verse is that? Please. Is it Psalms or Isaiah? Psalm 51 should be verse 7. Let me confirm. Or verse 10. It's Isaiah. Uh, it was verse 10. 51 verses 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Thank you very much, Sister Ruth. Thank you, Oshie. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. David, after, you know, I was looking at, why is David called uh, such sweet, that, that, that given that sweet uh, name, yeah? is it a name of race or something? Yeah. The only man after God's own heart. I, I was I was teaching my, my, my kids about David and I was like David was truly a repentant person. I think that is why God said uh, he is a man before God's own heart. He deeply repented completely and completely and clearly it was it it was very clear that indeed David repented. And that is why he understood that the heart which was in him was the heart of selfishness, the heart of sin, the heart that was there by the devil himself, that was put there, that was created in him by the devil himself. The deception from the beginning, from Genesis, from, from Adam and Eve, from heaven. So David understood that the only solution to his sin problem, to his... Uh, uh, selfishness is for God to take away that heart of self and then do what? Create a clean, new, different heart and renew a right spirit within him. May this be our prayer because we are as well in the same pool as David was. We fall into sin every now and then, but our God is so compassionate. Our God is so loving. His grace is sufficient. But remember, his grace, according to Titus chapter 2, verse 11, that grace teaches us, if I can use NIV, that grace of God, that unmerited favor, teaches us to say no to all ungodliness and live soberly. So that grace is not there to tell us, hey, you, Lillian, go see in Kidogo, and then you will come back. Lillian, hey, you go. Hmm? Kill that person, then come back. No, that grace, receiving it in our hearts, it will teach us to say no to all unrighteousness unrighteousness is the sinful acts so that grace will enable you to say no meaning if we are still entertaining sin <laughs> we haven't received the grace truly we're just living a formality type of christianity may our good lord help us may our father in heaven open our eyes that we may understand his much less love the grace the grace that will take us through in this journey of faith. Thank you so much. I had